So Gamma 2 sent me their K28 keyboard to check out because it's a rhythm game keyboard and it's unlike any other keyboard I've ever used. Really, it shouldn't even really be called a keyboard. It's more of a game controller, a specialized one at that. So here we have the keyboard itself. It feels quite nice. It comes in a bag and you can take the box out quite easily. And I'm just pressing all the buttons here. These use real mechanical switches. They use kale box browns. And here we've got a USB port and a headphone jack. So the headphone jack allows you to listen to audio directly from a PlayStation 4 and as a Type-C cable, so you know it's of the future. But it feels quite nice in the hand. It feels really good. So inside this keyboard are kale box browns, which are known for being dust resistant and also debris resistant as a whole. For our typing experience, I prefer them over real Cherry MX switches. So the keyboard also comes with a ton of O-rings, which help to dampen the sound. Whether or not they're necessary is really up to you and the switch you get. But I think they help quite a bit, so I'm going to go ahead and apply this one just to prove that, yes, you can do it. Here's a sound test without the O-rings. The device has a very stylish exterior, and it doesn't look like it belongs in any sort of PC gamer or general gamer's repertoire of controllers and keyboards. It looks like, it almost looks like a piano. These are the nicest keycaps I've ever had come with a keyboard. The keycaps are made from PBT plastic, which means they're of high quality. And they also are more flat. They don't really have the concaveness that most keycaps have, which can be a good or a bad thing, but I think it helps the aesthetic here. Unlike most keyboards, this keyboard here has rows and columns that are absolutely even, as opposed to the average keyboard's staggered rows and columns. The main reason most normal keyboards are made that way are because of typewriters back in the day. The keyboard is also extremely small. It's even smaller than the fabled 60% keyboard that people think are already way too small. Though this is a specialized keyboard for a specialized purpose, so no one's gonna blame it for being smaller. The frame uses an aluminum alloy, 6063 aluminum alloy to be precise. It's a single body piece which makes it really strong and it feels really nice in the hands. This is probably the densest keyboard I've ever held. Another thing of interest that most keyboards wouldn't have is this little gray box in the middle of it. It separates the two like halves of the keyboard, so to speak. And this area lights up and it is glorious. A lot of people will just look at this and think that it's just a showpiece, you know. A thing to look cool while you're pressing buttons, and for the most part it is. It's not to say that it has zero functionality. It, it's probably the most important piece when it comes to profiles and custom profiles as well. I'll elaborate further. Let's talk controller functionality and configuration because this is the secret sauce. This is how the controller is compatible with most of its games. So the manual is very important just in case you don't have access to the internet because this will tell you how to access each layout and it gives you instructions on how to set up your own custom layouts as well. It's in both Japanese and English. There's a grand total of 19 layouts, 8 of which are being custom layouts for different platforms. It seems as though these layouts are hard-coded into the system, except for the custom ones of course. Each preset layout is explicitly made for one or two games of similar styles. With there being so many rhythm games, there's so many different profiles in order to accommodate for as many as you can. All of this information, all of the information about layouts, about custom layouts, and about adjusting settings and whatnot can be found on their website here, linked below. Not a whole lot of people talk about the custom layouts, mainly because it seems really difficult to set up one for PS4 or the Nintendo Switch for that matter. And I'm here to show you how to do it because I figured out how to set up custom layouts for myself. To switch profiles, you hold down the top right button along with any of the other buttons listed in the manual in order to switch to that profile. 
the ones I'm switching to are just some random ones. Though, if you have a preferred game that you'd rather play, just switch to that one and keep it on that. For custom profiles, however, you must switch to one of the custom layouts and then hold the top right button. From there, you will keep pressing the button you want to define until the center lists the function that you wished for it to activate. In this case, I want this button up here to act as the up button on the D-pad. So here is the polling sequence of the Nintendo Switch configurator. As you can tell, the top two rows are fairly straightforward, and the bottom row is just the analog stick in four different directions. Both analog sticks, actually. And NL is null function, meaning there's no function. Though you cannot bind any of the stick clicks, which I don't believe any rhythm games use those on the Switch, but it's a, it's a pretty big loss regardless. The PS4 configurator is more robust, as it allows for all the same functions, as well as L3 and R3. And from what I can tell, it's impossible to bind any of the trackpad buttons. The clicking, I mean, not the actual like, trackpad itself. In theory, this allows you to make basically any sort of control scheme for any sort of game you need, regardless of whether or not it's officially supported. However, I do feel as though it's not realistic to be playing any sort of FPS games with this. It's not realistic to play, what, Call of Duty, Fortnite, Apex Legends? Anything that requires you to aim with the right stick basically is out of the question. I'm not the best rhythm player in the world. But the controller does its job. It works. It works really well. I'd argue that thanks to the fact that it's wired and not wireless, there's z literally zero latency. And, you know, latency in a rhythm game is literally death. Also advertised by Gamma 2 was its ability to play fighting games, or rather two special layouts made to emulate two different kinds of arcade sticks. Both of these arcade layouts come in PS4 exclusive mode only, so you will have to create your own customized version on the Nintendo Switch. Which I did! <laughs> the first layout is meant to emulate a mix box, an unholy combination of a gaming keyboard and an arcade stick. The next layout is meant to emulate a unique style of arcade stick known as the Hitbox. You could definitely use the K28 as a fighting game controller, however, it doesn't seem like it was ever designed to be solely for this purpose. It was solely designed for music gameplay, and the fact that you can do it just seems like a byproduct of how versatile this product really is. It's very possible to use the Gamma 2 on the PC, as the PC Master Race intended. However, there's a few caveats with this. For starters, I think this is very obvious, but I think I have to point this out. You cannot type on this thing. <coughs> there's not enough keys for all the letters, and the default setting doesn't even have all the letters. So the PC layout is as follows, listed right here. With the default controls the way they are, the top row is S, D, 
an F. There's no A, there's no W, there's no Q, E, or R. Many of the buttons you would use in an FPS game are not usable here. Not to say that you couldn't use it, but you would have to go into key bindings, you'd have to redo all that, and it's a massive pain unless, you know, you want to put the effort in. Now, I mentioned that the 3.5mm headphone jack works on the PS4 as an audio output, but it also works the same way on PC if plugged in. If you don't want it to do that, and rather you just want to use the speakers on the outside, you'll have to go into your audio settings and disable it. When it comes to PC support, I do believe there are some missed opportunities here. The first one would be a custom layout configurator for the keyboard, allowing you to rebind the buttons into any sort of keyboard function as needed. This would have opened you up for using this as a sort of FPS controller. Another missed opportunity in my opinion is the ability to use the PS4 layouts or the Nintendo Switch layouts on your PC as an X input controller. This would have made playing fighting games or rhythm games or basically any other game that supports the controller a lot easier. This product shows a lot of promise and I really enjoyed my time with it. I really enjoyed playing all these rhythm games with it and I really enjoyed playing Osu even though I'm terrible at the game. Fighting games I also enjoyed too, though it doesn't feel that much different compared to just playing on a keyboard. It does look really cool though, so if you decide to go to a tournament, your locals or whatever, go ahead and bring this thing. It'll really turn some heads. A lot of people will be looking at the price tag and they'll be thinking that, wow, this is totally not worth it, but not meant for everyone. It's not meant for most people really, it's meant for the dedicated. The people who are dedicated to one thing, music games, and maybe fighting games if they're into that. And it's a very niche product, I mean it's not meant for everyone. You can't use it on every game, it's not a mass market product. For anyone used to using keyboards on games, I highly recommend this for them. I also recommend this for anyone that prefers rhythm games over most other kind of games. I also recommend this for people who want to try something new and have the dough to spend Thanks for watching my videos. Thank you for liking, for subscribing, and please share with all your family and friends. I'll admit this review was a was a really long time coming. <laughs>